For just such a time as this we were made, in the image of God, loving, grace-giving, and wise, we are created to be the hands, hearts, and feet of divinity. And so we come together on this Ash Wednesday, not because we must, not to puff ourselves up, but to start out on the trail leading to the resurrection. Let us worship God. So hear the call to confession. The prophet Joel cried out, return to the Lord with all your heart, with fasting, with weeping, with mourning. Rend your hearts and not your clothing, for God is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. Let us confess our sin and repent of all unrighteousness. Let us pray. Merciful God, we confess that we have been a rebellious people. We have broken your covenant and we have tolerated injustice in our land. We have not shared our food with the hungry. We have not sheltered the homeless. We have not aided the destitute. We quarrel and fight among ourselves and we use religion to cover our deceit. We have become a mockery of your her our heritage. The world looks at us and asks, where is their God? Forgive us, O oh God. So receive the assurance of pardon. The prophet Isaiah says, if you remove the yoke from among you, the pointing of the finger and the speaking of evil, if you offer food to the hungry and satisfy the needs of those who are afflicted, then your light shall rise in the darkness and your gloom become like the noonday. In the name of Jesus Christ, know that you and I are forgiven and new people thanks be to God. Let us pray. 
By the illumination of your Holy Spirit, O God, open our hearts that we may hear your word and amend our lives. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Scripture lesson today is taken from the sixth chapter of the Gospel of Matthew. Beware of practicing your piety before others in order to be seen by them, for then you have no reward from your Father in heaven. So whenever you give alms, do not sound the trumpet before you, as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets, so that they may be praised by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But when you give alms, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, so that your alms may be done in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. And whenever you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to stand and pray in the synagogues and on the street corners, so that they may be seen by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But whenever you pray, go into your room and shut the door and pray to your Father who is in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. Here ends the reading. May God grant us understanding to these words of Scripture. One of my favorite things about the church is the fact that we have a weird calendar that the world doesn't use, but that we cling to in a different way. And I think this year I needed this weird calendar to keep track of how I felt and where we were. The days don't work anymore. It feels like this constant, what day is it? Struggle of work and rest and eat and sleep with only Sundays as a rock. And in that calendar, the liturgical calendar, we have seasons too. Not just spring, summer, fall, and winter. There's Advent and Epiphany, Lent, and ordinary time. There are seasons that mark the time in different ways, in ways that line up with our historically important dates of our Christian calendar. And so I guess I'm just saying that I really am appreciating that calendar this year. Because as we do the things that come with this Lenten season, Each Sunday of Lent gets closer and closer to what we now know as before the pandemic. We have a season that marks our time, and like any calendar, it makes us think about what we were doing last year, so blissfully unaware of what was to come. Honestly, New Year's was pretty hard this year. I had hope, sure, but so many were saying that this pandemic wasn't something that we were going to be leaving in 2020, maybe not even 2021. And so I'm grateful for the Christian calendar year, which places us right now not in the beginning of a fresh new year, but right in the thick, middle, messy part of the year. Today, Ash Wednesday, puts us on the track of a dark couple of weeks, six or so, that get darker and darker. Today, we recognize that we will die And for a culture that is youth-obsessed and continually having the average length of life be longer and longer, that's hard. In normal years, this might be the only reminder that you will hear all year, that you will die. That you will return to the breathless stardust that you were created out of, in a normal year anyway. And so there's been a lot of talk about what this Ash Wednesday would need to look like. Do people need to be reminded that they will die in a 12-month period when almost 500,000 Americans are dying around us? A year that 2.5 million people worldwide have been lost, grandmothers and fathers, nurses and teachers and church members and loved ones and children. Do we still need to be reminded that we are dust? Yes, but for different reasons. For some of us, we might think that we're too careful to die from it, too powerful to die from it, too good of health care to die from it, too important to die from it. And I think we need a reminder that good people, that important people, that careful people have all died. And if we really lean into this church holy day, we will go on a journey together for the next six weeks, one that mirrors our world, It will get darker and darker, 
The light will become dimmer and dimmer as people continue to die around us. As we get closer to Holy Week, Jesus will host his Last Supper. He will say goodbye to those he loves. He will die on a cross. And then he will sit, dead, in a tomb for a holy Saturday that looks a lot like where we are now. And if that's where you are right now, in a dark place that looks like it's just getting darker, I want you to know that this story, the church, the story of Jesus Christ, has a place and a space for your darkness. You can rest and know that you are not alone. And if you're, you're a little uncomfortable with that idea, it's probably good that we have this time to slow down and recognize it. But if you've sat in that a little too long this year, if death is all around you and you've learned to swim in it, but you need a little breath of fresh air to get through the rest, know that Easter is coming. Vaccines are coming. And as we go through this darker time, know that light is breaking through bit by bit. Know that you are loved by God just where you are and who you are right now. And that yes, you will die. But with Christ, you also see an Easter with lilies and the tomb rolled away. And know that that death and that black cross on your forehead are only temporary things of this world. And rest knowing that tonight when you wash off your forehead, with your sink water or your skincare routine, or maybe tomorrow's shower, remind yourself that that water isn't just anything. It's a reminder of your baptism, that you will die with Christ, but you will also be raised. Know that that, forehead on, that cross is on your forehead because you are a beloved child of God, and there's absolutely nothing you can do about it. That even when you clean it off, you are doing so with the water that connects us all together forever throughout time and space to all the saints who have come before and all the saints that will come after. That's the holy mystery of this day. That's the holy mystery of love. So remember that you are stardust, and to stardust you will return. Thanks be to God. Amen.
We have come to the portion of the service for the imposition of ashes. If you need a minute to find your Lent in a bag, ashes, you can pause now and come back when you're ready. If you weren't able to pick up a bag, you can use dirt, black eyeshadow, drawing charcoals, chalk, or even any oil you have in your kitchen. You may remember from our Ash Wednesday service last year, I told a story about a group who has been working within the LGBTQ plus community since the AIDS pandemic, when LGBT people were reminded every day that death was a real and present danger. And so this group started mixing in one part glitter to every three part ashes. And they say exactly what I say to you here today, that this day can be what you need it to be. Friends, we don't live in fear of ash or of death. We place it on our forehead today for the world to see. And yet we also know that God specifically calls us not to project that fear onto the other, the alien, the stranger in our midst. God insists that we look for the spark of life, of hope, in ourselves and in one another. This Ash Wednesday, feel free to add some glitter to your ash and stand witness to the gritty, glittery, scandalous hope that exists in the very marrow of the story of the Lenten journey. The thing about glitter is it leaves a trail no matter how careful you are. It sticks around and never gives up. And neither does God's love for you. So go ahead now and dip your thumb into your ashes or your ash-like substances and make the form of a cross on your forehead or hand as I say this to you. Remember, child of God, that you are stardust, and to stardust you shall return. You are dust, and to dust you shall return. You, child of God, are made of the same elements that make the stars in the night sky, and one day you shall return to those elements, and Christ is with you every step of the way. Amen. Will you bow with me in prayer? Trusting in your righteousness, O God, we pray this day for our world and for the needs of those who suffer. For the church, that in this season of fasting and repentance, the people of God with sincere hearts may amend their lives and obey the gospel. For all pastors and teachers, that they may lead the church by humble example and give public witness without concern for earthly reward. For peace among the nations and integrity within governments. And especially we pray this day, O oh God, for our own nation in this time of healing and of reconciliation. We pray during these days for justice across the land and especially for wisdom and guidance for our elected leaders and our new president, Joseph Biden, and his vice president, Kamala Harris. We pray for our city, for the surrounding suburbs and towns of Buffalo, for all who live here, that neighborhoods may be places of hospitality and care. We pray for the poor and oppressed, that they may find deliverance from their distress for all who seek to alleviate human suffering, especially those on the front lines dealing with healing and hope in this time of pandemic. We pray for those who suffer illness of mind or body, for those who care for them, that they may be healed of disease and know the joy of abundant life. We pray, O oh God, for those who've lost loved ones, for those struggling with this virus, for all of those you know who are in homes, in hospitals, ill of mind or body or spirit. O oh God, we offer these concerns and those deep within our hearts, for yet we have to find the words to express them. And we say these things in Jesus' name, 
and the prayer he taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and glory, forever and ever. Amen. Friends, when that black smudge fades away today, or you wash it off with your shower, and with that washing off, we try to forget the fear of death and the uncontrollable hold it has on our lives. Remember the glitter that sticks inside of you, the hope that comes with the end of this Lenten journey, the invitation to eternal life that waits for us on the other side of these 40 days, and that the other side of this pandemic is coming. If only we have the hope and the care for one another through the journey. If only we have the bravery to sit in the darkness with each other and to bring the light with us when we leave. So when you go, may the grace of God, the love of Christ, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all, now and forevermore. Amen.